Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Hello everyone, my name is Dean Yao, I'm the Director of Marketing here at Genthos Software. Uh, today we have a special guest with us, uh, Wadio, and um, the topic of today's webinar is Visualizing IT Rapid Business Data Discovery for the Internet of Things. So we've partnered with Wadio to combine our technologies together to really offer a powerful solution uh, in order to provide better data analysis and visualization as well as, as well as reporting and dashboarding capabilities on top of Internet of Things data. Uh, so here with me today on our side we have Leo Zhao, he's going to be running the demo. Um, we also have Mitchell Golner, who's the VP of Product Management from Wadio, as well as we're joined by Jim Brandt, who is the Head of Engineering at Wadio. And uh, uh, as of now, let me hand over things to Mitchell for, uh, for a quick introduction on Wadio before I take back control and I'll cover uh, some details and some overview about uh, JRPort and what we do with our products and solutions. Uh, and then I'll turn over things to, uh, to our demo guys and they will run the, uh, the joint demo uh, and we'll, we'll follow that up with uh, some uh, next steps. Uh, so with that, Mitchell, welcome. Thanks, Dean. Wadio is a data service exchange for connected device platforms. As we hear, the Internet of Things is a huge opportunity. Cisco predicts that there will be 50 billion connected devices by 2020. And Gartner Group predicts that there will be $1.9 trillion of total economic value add by 2020. GE says that the industrial internet could add 10 to $15 trillion to global GDP. And Intel estimates that there will be $41 trillion spent on IoT infrastructure upgrades for cities over the next 20 years. So these are gigantic numbers, and whether you believe the $1.9 trillion number or a $15 trillion number for that industry, the numbers are huge, and it's clear that there's a huge opportunity here. But how do you capture that opportunity? Today, businesses use a range of tools to run their businesses, including data services that you see here on the right in the diagram. Data services such as data stores or databases, scripting or rules engines, analytics platforms, and reporting platforms such as JReports. Much of that data is entered by people, which is laborious and doesn't happen in real time. The Internet of Things brings sensors, billions of sensors to the scene. The promise of IoT is that it automates the collection of data in real time, bringing great efficiencies to businesses. An enterprise customer may have thousands of sensors which are generating data, but where does that data go? The enterprise customer would like to be able to integrate and overlay the vast array of sensor data with their existing data and business processes in order to make great decisions in real time. But that's where there's a huge disconnect. When you want to create an IoT solution, there's friction in every form. There are technical and legal barriers just to getting a solution up and running, which costs a lot of time and money. And this is the very problem that Wadio addresses. The solution is Wadio. Wadio is a data service exchange for connected device platforms. There are many connected device platforms available today, IoT and M2M platforms with data at rest or data in motion. The Wadio data service exchange is a marketplace of integrated third-party data services that operate on data from connected devices. You can see those types of services on the right part of the diagram. The key point is that these third-party data services are already integrated you, the developer, do not need to focus on the technical or the legal aspects of integrating with new data services and can hit the ground running. Wadio adds value to the data by enabling the easy connection and management of these third-party data services. There are 60-plus data services available in the Wadio marketplace today. So you can choose a database, a scripting engine for setting business rules, data visualization tools such as Elasticsearch and Kibana, a reporting platform such as JReports, a web automation tools such as avail those available in Bipio, uh, for example, event-triggered messaging on Twitter or email, and many other data services. This slide shows the Wadio architecture and how it fits into the ecosystem. The Wadio architecture is in the middle of the diagram and is shown here in green. On the left of the diagram in blue are industry verticals that utilize IoT and produce vast amounts of data. Industries such as smart cities, industrial, oil and gas, healthcare, and many others. On the right of the diagram in pink are third-party data services, those data services that we talked about before. The Wadio architecture in the middle in green consists of the adapter framework, 
um, which provides an easy way to connect to device management platforms and also support, a multi, multi, support multiple protocols including AMQP, HTTP, WebSockets, MQTT, and more. The routing and messaging bus handles the data flow between data services. And Wadio also has additional services such as authorization and authentication, token provisioning, control dashboards, and more, which are needed to put together a complete IoT solution. In short, Wadio enables you to unlock the full value of your IoT data. As Wadio is agnostic of data sources, we enable you to bring all of your data under one roof and deal with it holistically. You can choose from our best-in-class third-party data services which store, enhance, manage, and act upon the data. The Wadio advantages are time to market. So with our pre-integrated third-party data services and marketplace, you can pick and choose the data services you want to work with and create your IoT solution quickly. Once you have an arrangement of third-party data services to operate on the data, the solution is scalable. So we offer you a choice. You have the choice of a vast array of data services to choose from. We offer flexibility to adapt to new data services and flexibility to add multiple data inputs. And ultimately, Wadio helps to future-proof your IT solution. The openness of Wadio is a powerful concept which has attracted a world-class list of partners shown here. While being technology, network access, and partner agnostic, Wadio provides many choices of data stores, device management, connectivity platforms, real-time event processing, and systems integrators right out of the box. The point here is that the data owner is in complete control of how data is stored, enhanced, shared, and utilized. And with the Wadio architecture, it becomes a trivial matter to add new data service partners quickly and inexpensively. Data owners no longer need to compromise when turning information into ROIs. In addition to providing many choices around enhancing data, Wadio also provides openness and choice with interacting with over 60 web applications such as Twitter, email, Twilio, MailChimp, and many others shown here. With Wadio's user interface, you can rapidly create workflows with the cloud components you love and no programming is required. You can get started with Wadio today. Um, check out our website at wot.io, and you can take our data service exchange for a test drive. Just go to Getting Started and the tab Ship IoT. And you can also get started with Bipio, um, which is a range of web automation tools. Just go to the website bip.io. Back to you, Dean. All right. Thanks, Mitchell. Um, so now I'm going to cover the, uh, the JIRAPORT uh, portion of this uh, webinar, and I'm just going to run through a quick uh, a few slides uh, before we jump into the demo. So uh, JIRAPORT's mission is uh, quite simply to simplify the complexity of reporting and data visualization, and hopefully that will become more apparent as I uh, go through the, uh, the talk here. Um, just want to kind of cover a few of the product highlights. So JIRAPORT is an, adva an advanced embedded visualization platform, and three of the main highlights here, the first one being high performance and scalability. Uh, so we offer a lot of the, the architectural and performance uh, enhancements that makes our solution very powerful. We've been around uh, for well over a decade, about 15 years, so we've had some time to really hone the performance of the JIRAPORT server. We've built out a clustering solution. Uh, which allows for high availability, scalability, and uh, fault resilience. Uh, we have technologies such as intelligent pushdown technology, which takes specific types of database queries or SQL queries, pushes those down to the database uh, for computation on the database, and a minimal result set is passed back to JIRAPORT server. And those result sets typically are aggregation result sets, can be stored in um, in-memory cubes for fast retrieval later on. Uh, most dashboards and reports are pulling uh, aggregation information, whereas some are pulling detailed information, which all can be cached on, on JIRAPORT server. Uh, the next one is in self-serviceability. So we make it so easy that anyone, any type of user, whether it's an IT administrator, a systems administrator, um, a report developer, or a power user, or even an end user, can create their own reports and dashboards and even modify them later on and distribute them to whoever, whomever they want. Uh, they can incorporate interactive charts, widgets, and controls, and uh, have the flexibility to just build their reports in the way they want. Uh, they can connect to any type of data source, from relational databases to big data and cloud data sources. And even uh, today, we're talking about uh, uh, IoT data sources from, uh, from Wadio. Uh, we can deliver, uh, JIRAPORT delivers data anywhere from uh, mobile browsers to PC browsers. We have a mobile product called JIRAPORT Mobile, which I'll talk about later. And we offer the customization to allow 
uh, our customers to embed JReport into their own applications so that the reports and dashboards look seamlessly blended into their own applications. Uh, so embeddable uh, power and customization is really where we uh, shine. All right, and a quick, uh, uh, just a quick slide on market positioning. So traditional BI systems, uh, they're great for the enterprise, very enterprise ready, um, a lot of features, but also with that comes very uh, complex uh, tool sets, requires a lot of training, a very high cost, and they're susceptible to vendor lock-in. Uh, and also, very importantly, it's very difficult to embed these large BI systems into existing applications. On the other side, we have open source technologies where, you know, since you have the source code, it's very easy to embed into other applications, uh, but they often have a very focused set of features. Uh, getting new features is difficult because you're, you're, you're sometimes dependent on the community to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, open source is usually low cost, but uh, the commercial versions of those open source uh, solutions, which most production environments will use, uh, that, those tend to be high cost as, as, as well. So where JReport fits is sort of the best of both worlds. We offer the enterprise ready, full feature capability of the uh, high complex and traditional BI systems uh, with the power of embedding uh, of the open source uh, technologies. A few of the solution areas that we like to focus on of course, embedded business intelligence and uh, OEM deployments, where our, our OEM partners will distribute JReport embedded into their applications. Uh, we have uh, dashboards and reports, uh, visual analytics, uh, which will be shown in a demo later, as well as mobile BI. So just drilling a little bit deeper into the embedded solution. As I mentioned, JReport is an embedded BI platform. It has all the security uh, administrative features that enterprise uh, expects and has all the customizations that the product managers and the products uh, and projects uh, expect when you embed them into their uh, uh, frameworks. Uh, we have a very strong sense of uh, metadata management. And what I mean by that is all of our components, reports, uh, dimensions, uh, formulas, measures, all of these are organized into catalogs for easy reuse later on in, uh, in future dashboards and reports. Uh, we have a very uh, extensive set of development tools. Uh, we have an IDE that lets you uh, build components, reports, and dashboards from scratch in a very easy, intuitive way. And we have a very uh, extensive API set for application embedding. So there's a number of different ways to embed uh, reports and dashboards and even the entire JRPort server into other applications, uh, the API being the most extensive one. All right, moving along to talk about uh, some self-serviceability. Uh, this is really achieved through two of our solutions, the first one being ad hoc reporting and another one being ad hoc analytics, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So with ad hoc reporting, it really lets the end users and uh, power users uh, create uh, reports from scratch, uh, setting them to, uh, to pull data from specific data sources. You can set a report to pull data from one or more data sources. Uh, you can set up uh, sorts, filters, linking to the reports. Um, you can uh, set your own themes, profiles, print layouts, and all this lets you adhere to your corporate uh, security and governance policies. And really easy to set up one-click interactions so that you can drill down into the data, get the data that you need to make those better business decisions. Uh, the next one being ad hoc analysis. And this is a, a new product we, we released last year called Visual Analytics. And this is really a drag and drop method of analyzing data. So what you see is a blank cross tab and you can start to drag and drop in dimensions and measures from your data source immediately into that cross tab and see the data right away without having to go through some kind of wizard and seeing the data at the end. You can build uh, the representation and the visualization uh, as you see the data and you can mani manipulate that, see it from different angles. You can change it from a, a, a bar chart to a line chart to a pie chart. You can rotate the dimensions and measures. You can remove, add new, new ones. Uh, it's a very powerful way to see your data in different views very quickly. And it's all powered by in-memory cubes. That's what makes it so fast and agile. And Leo will show you a demo, a quick demo of that later on. All right, uh, the next product I want to highlight is J Dashboard. And this is an end-user focused tool that lets you really easily build dashboards from scratch. Uh, you start with a blank a canvas, and all you have to do is easily drag in components, charts, tables, cross tabs, and maps, widgets. Google Maps is supported. OpenStreetMap is supported. You just drag those in from an existing uh, component library. Uh, so very easy to build and change and modify the, the way your data looks in a dashboard. And it's all based on HTML5. Uh, just a couple of ways to interact with the data. You can link 
the dashboards or reports to other reports. You can drill into charts, customize parameters. Um, you can do something called conditional formatting, where if a certain value crosses a threshold, you could, for instance, change the color of that, uh, of that value. Uh, On-screen filters, and you can set interactions between different components. So you can have a filter con component uh, filter across one or more of the components in the dashboard. So a lot of different ways to interact with your data. This is just a small subset. Um, and then turning our attention to big data, this is one of our, our focus areas now. Is uh, uh, As you all know, big data is large, complex, unstructured sets of data, uh, your typical genomics data, social media data, traffic data. Um, oftentimes, it is, uh, big data is stored in NoSQL databases, uh, which are non-relational, distributed, open source, and very scalable types of uh, uh, data stores. Um, the, the, the core algorithm in a lot of NoSQL databases is MapReduce, uh, which is a parallel processing algorithm that uh, breaks processes down into sub-processes, passing them from master to worker nodes and so forth, and then assembling those sub-processes together back up to the master node. Um, we support uh, vendors like MongoDB, uh, Apache Hadoop vendors, uh, MapR, Hortonworks, and Cloudera, and uh, Mac Apache Hive. So these are just some of the vendors that we support in the big data area. So big data is, is important, of course, uh, but the, what's more important is to make sense out of the big data. So how do you do that? Well, through visualization. Um, we have an entirely different uh, discussion about that, uh, but that's not the focus of today's uh, webinar. Um, and now that we have all this great visualization, how do you get this into the hands of your end users? Well, one of the ways is through web delivery, and we're able to deliver uh, interactive, sophisticated reports in two different ways. Uh, one is called page reports, which is really a way to provide reports in a page format. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of customers still like to print out their reports. Uh, so we give this to them uh, in a PDF that is in a page structure uh, with all the headers and footers and the, the margins all precisely uh, formatted in a pixel-perfect type of uh, uh, manner. We also offer web reports, which is a much more interactive way to look at and interact with your data. So here are three examples of uh, three of our customers, EMC, Visa, and Paskey, which got acquired by Lanyon. Um, you can see that uh, you know, we are embedded into those applications and you can't even tell where JReport starts and where JReport ends. Um, the, the beauty is that uh, you can customize and white label JReport's reports and dashboards so that looks seamlessly blended into our customers' uh, host applications. Um, JReport server, as I mentioned, is architecturally very strong. So we have a very scalable architecture with high, we can offer a high volume on-demand reports and you can even schedule reports to run on a weekly or daily basis and you can access them from web and mobile devices to, to any kind of format, PDF being a very popular one, and Excel, uh, also another popular one. And when we export out to Excel, we actually retain the real chart data, not just an image uh, of that chart and pasting it into Excel. So you can use Excel and further modify the representation of your data as you move forward. And the last sort of uh, technology I want to discuss is uh, JRPort Mobile, and uh, this is a way to view your dashboards, anything you create on JDashboard, can now be viewable on a iOS device, an iPad or an iPhone, and you can actually interact with it in just the same way as you would on a web browser. Uh, this is something you can download for free on the uh, Apple App Store. And of course, it's, it's a native browser, a uh, native app, you can uh, uh, use your device uh, gestures like you're swiping, you're pinching, you're scrolling, uh, just as you would with any other uh, iOS uh, application. All right, so with that, let me uh, turn, uh, turn the discussion quickly back to uh, Mitchell for a discussion on the, um, the block diagram of Wadio, and then I'll come back and tell you what you're going to see on the JRPort side. Uh, so Mitchell, you can uh, go ahead and describe. Thanks. Um, so we're going to go ahead with a demo in just a, just a few minutes. Um, but this is a block diagram showing, um, showing the ecosystem, um, showing the demo. So we have basically uh, data coming from um, either a uh, sensor tag, uh, TI sensor tag through device hive platform, and that data comes into the Wadio operating environment. And as you see, there's a dotted line around all the elements um, that are in the Wadio operating environment. Um, that includes, so one path is through Abstrata, um, which is a scripting engine, and that scripting engine enables um, somebody to write business rules so that upon triggered events, um, we can do things such as send a Twitter alert through the BitBio web automation platform. Uh, another path that you see there is um, Elasticsearch and Kibana, um, and these tools enable you to do real-time visualization um, of the data coming through the Wadio bus. And then 
if you look at um, JReport, that's what we're going to demo today, um, we have a data stores such as MongoDB or Postgres um, that feed into the JReports platform, enabling um, for reports to be generated with all the features that Dean just um, mentioned. So all of those elements fit under the Wadio operating environment. You have control um, and are able to uh, configure the system um, with the tools that you want. Great, thanks, Mitchell. And uh, so what kind of drilling down to that JRPort a little bit more, uh, Mitchell mentioned that um, uh, they're using MongoDB and, uh, and Postgres for this demo. And what you'll see is a dashboard uh, that lets you visualize the IoT data. Uh, the top four components will come from data in MongoDB and the bottom uh, ch uh, table will come from uh, Postgres. Um, so I'm going to turn control over to Jim, and he's going to show you a vending machine example with an array of sensors. Um, so bef while I'm doing that, I'd like to put up a couple of uh, polling questions for you guys to answer while, while I'm giving control over to Jim. And uh, the first question here is, uh, uh, are you actively searching for a reporting solution? Okay, and uh, just give you guys a little, little few more seconds to answer that, and then uh, let's switch to the next polling question. So, what type of product do you need a reporting solution for? We'll leave that on for about 15 seconds. All right, let's switch to the, uh, the next polling question, and this is the uh, what IO IoT related question. Are you working on an IoT solution today? Leave that on for uh, 10 to 15 more seconds. All right, and I promise one last one before we switch uh, over to Jim here. Uh, the last polling question is, let's see if we can get that one up. Uh, what do you see as the main benefit of IoT? Throw that up there for another uh, 10 seconds. All right, perfect. All right, Jim, uh, take it away. You can uh, go ahead and share your screen now. All right, thanks, Dean. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so the uh, the demo that we're going to go through today, and, and this is one that we use as a sort of representative of the, uh, the IoT sort of environment that uh, you might experience out there, is the familiar vending machine that uh, you know everyone uh, probably uses every day. Um, now, we don't use this because we're uh, a vending machine company. Obviously, JReports isn't a vending machine company. But uh, it's a good example of uh, a way that uh, various types of IoT technologies are going to slowly be introduced into uh, all sorts of different environments to enable some of those things that we just saw on that last poll that I see people sort of checked all different answers there as to the value they could see uh, coming out of uh, IoT. So if you think about uh, something like a vending machine, the vending machine could have various uh, sensors in it. Um, and those sensors could be uh, something like a temperature sensor, which can be interesting to make sure that the machine doesn't get too hot, which could sort of spoil some of the candy, the chocolate would melt or something like that. Um, or the temperature sensor could tell you if uh, things got too cold, because then the, uh, the, the beverages might freeze in there. So um, the, the temperature could be sent, uh, sent back to some uh, sort of central facility. They could monitor all of their vending machines and keep track of that uh, kind of thing. Uh, in a similar vein, um, you could have uh, something like an accelerometer, which is just a motion sensor, and then you could tell if uh, somebody maybe is shaking the machine, right? They've tried to buy some candy, and it's sort of hanging there on the edge of, the, uh, of, of coming out, and it's not quite there, so uh, maybe they're trying to encourage it to, to come down, and maybe that sensor could send back information to see if someone is uh, being a little too robust in uh, trying to get their, uh, their food out. So um, those are some of the things that could just be in something as, as simple as, uh, as a vending machine. And they also highlight something that is a little bit different about IoT data from some of the systems that we have uh, out there now that people maybe are more familiar with, which is that these types of sensors send data all the time. Now, you might have a sensor in here that only sends something every time something is purchased, and that would be like an inventory control. And then you would know that, oh, I, you know, something is empty and someone should go out and service the machine. But something like the temperature or the motion sensor, they're going to be set on a schedule. Maybe it's like once a minute. 
and the data is just constantly coming in uh, from from that sort of uh, of a sensor. And that is, it's a little bit different. That's one of the challenges when you get into uh, IoT data is building a solution that not only can make use of that data and probably look for things like exceptions, like a really high temperature, really low temperature, or really skewed values on the motion sensor. Uh, but you also have uh, issues with the volume of the data that's coming in because it's, it is just coming in all the time and there's various strategies that you can use uh, to sort of tackle that. And then as far as the, you know, just seeing uh, general values over time, that's where solutions like uh, J-Reports uh, come in and uh, can be uh, very useful. Um, so again, this is just one example that we have, but uh, as we saw in one of those original slides that uh, Mitchell had, um, there are all sorts of applications that we're going to see with um, these types of sensors and many others. And, you know, warehouses and retail applications, factories, all over uh, our environment, uh, we're going to see all sorts of uh, uh, different type of applications just like this one. So what we do to sort of uh, uh, demonstrate a little bit, you know, what's going on with what these sensors are doing and, and how it could manifest is um, we have a, a couple of different controls that we have down at the bottom that uh, allow us to actually manipulate some of the values that are coming out of the vending machine. And when we get over to the J-Report side, you'll see where uh, the vending machines have been sending values over time, they've been accumulating, and then we'll see the couple of different exceptions. So for example, you can, uh, we can click on this in our demo and simulate either a cold day or, or a hot day. Um, and, and try to send some different values over so that we can see some exceptions when we get over to the, um, the J-Report side. So you can see that you know, the machine is frozen, maybe it's in a really cold location, um, and uh, someone's going to want to know about that because maybe they need to come and check and, and see if anything uh, has sort of been, been damaged uh, in the process there. So what's happening um, you know, when these values uh, come out? And again, we saw this uh, on, the, on the screen before. Um, the values are coming out of some sensors that are inside of the, uh, the machine, going through potentially some sort of a gateway. Maybe there's a bank of vending machines that are all sort of sending through one system, uh, some uh, device management platform. And then uh, the Watt operating environment sends uh, the messages that are coming in. Those messages could be as simple as a JSON message. It just has that temperature reading in it. Um, in a known uh, quantity, so either Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, and then we take care of routing it to all these different ways, as Mitchell explained earlier. So it could do something like go through the Abstrata and BIPIO infrastructure and send an alert to say, hey, you know, an exception happened. We've seen something here. Someone should go check this out. Or it can go into some persistent data stores where, uh, in this example, we have uh, MongoDB and Postgres set up, where we have a solution like JReports, which can actually connect to both of those. So if you had data that was uh, potentially being stored in a couple of different solutions, uh, the JReport solution can connect all of them and then show you different data uh, across all the different uh, uh, data uh, stores that you have and help you sort of make sense of that, get the reporting out that you want. And then, uh, as Dean described, um, maybe there's regulatory requirements where you have to fill out certain forms maybe to show that, uh, for example, the food in the vending machine is, is good for the, the dates that are, that are shown. You can even use the, uh, the, that uh, form generation that maybe generates those regulatory forms in exactly the, uh, the format that the, the regulators want to see, and maybe you can even print it if they need a, a hard copy to, uh, to send off. So that's the uh, initial part of the demo where uh, the data is being generated. Uh, it's going across the operating environment. It's uh, landing in those data stores. And then the next part of the demo, we're going to show some of the reports that you can generate. Uh, so I think for that part, we'll go back over to JReports. All right. Thank you, Jim. Uh, let me take back control. OK. And uh, let me share my screen here. All right. So. Yeah, the next part I want to show is actually the um, the, the dashboard that, would, that I described earlier. And uh, you can see here that we have four components, uh, four visual charts that we're pulling data in from MongoDB. And uh, we're also showing a, uh, a more detailed table below here that's actually pulling from uh, Postgres. And there's really only two rows there. This is the, the detailed table here represents two gateways or two groups of uh, sensors that we're pulling data from. Um, everything here is from a simulated network uh, that uh, Jim was uh, pushing into these data sources, or specifically to MongoDB. So uh, this is just one e simple representation of how you can visualize uh, IoT data. And I'm not going to go through all the components here, but uh, they are all uh, interactive. Uh, you can hover over them and see the, the counts. Um, you can, uh, we set up a slider control so you can actually change the date range and you can see the, the data being filtered by uh, the, different, uh, the different dates. Uh, I can go back and uh, reset that to all the dates. And um, uh, you can see that the vending machine, uh, you can select a filter on the vending machine number. So there's no data for vending machine two, but let's say for vending machine one, uh, there was data for that. 
Uh, so easy filters, and you can you can add these filters just by dragging and dropping them from a, from a filter library. Um, so we're actually showing data from accelerometer sensors and also temperature sensors. But what I want to focus on is actually this uh, temperature readings by value bar chart. Um, the exceptions that Jim mentioned are actually visualized here. So in, in Fahrenheit, we have a bar showing 32 degrees or lower, uh, which is uh, an exception. It's a cold exception that was thrown by the sensor. Uh, the normal operating range of a vending machine uh, is 32 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And a hot exception is when it's uh, over 80 degrees or higher. So sensors will throw these uh, exceptions, and uh, it's up to it's up to the uh, the users to figure out what to do with this information. So uh, I can click on the the 32 and lower um, uh, bar. It's a very thin bar. It's hard to click on, and actually see that a report is uh, being pulled up, uh, and it launches a, a drill down report that shows you all the data. Well, this is coming from vending machine one and three. Um, most of the exceptions are being thrown by vending machine three, as you can see here, and you can actually do a filter on only the vending machine uh, three's data. Uh, so it's interactive report this way. You can actually see the uh, vending machine, the value, which is the temperature in Fahrenheit, and when this exception was actually thrown, uh, this, this value was read. So you can kind of go back and see, oh, okay, so it looks like yesterday uh, it was uh, uh, throwing some, uh, some cold exceptions. Let's figure out what happened at that time. Perhaps it's um, outside and it was uh, you know, in, a, in a cold area, northern United States uh, or some other cold area. Um, and we can figure out how to rectify that, uh, that uh, situation by maybe putting it uh, indoors or moving it closer to a heated location. Um, so let's uh, close that out and let's look at the high exception. So we have 32,000 uh, much more uh, sensor readings that are, that are throwing the high, uh, high temperature uh, exceptions. So we click on that and a report is uh, generated here. Oh look, it's actually a different vending machine. Vending machine one is throwing all of these uh, hot exceptions. Well, they're, they're getting pretty hot, you know, 94 degrees, 95 degrees, um, all uh, um, yesterday as well. This is data that we actually generated over the past week. Um, so let's actually go and see where vending machine one is located. It's probably in a, in a hot, uh, hot climate, maybe Las Vegas or in Arizona. Um, and uh, let's figure out how to, how to fix that maybe by putting it indoors. Um, you definitely don't want to have a hot vending machine that uh, has melted chocolate and hot soda in it. Okay, so this is just kind of uh, one of the ways that you can uh, explore and interact with the data to be able to, to draw conclusions and be able to make better business actions uh, out of it. Um, so with that, let me uh, actually turn things over to Leo, and he will show you just a few more examples of what you can do with our reports and dashboards and show you our visual analysis uh, tool. So, uh, with that, let me change over to Leo, and I'll give him con uh, presenter control. All right. All right, thanks, Dean. Uh, now let's get into like a little bit more in-depth like uh, dashboard examples. Uh, we can also take a look at some other use cases. So you like in this dashboard, basically uh, we will focus on some like a coffee sales data. Uh, to take a look like uh, from a couple of different angles uh, how you know like the performance uh, going on you know like overall for example on the top uh, we have like uh, you know like a, a historical chart and in this chart basically we will show like uh, in the past two years like uh, day by day like a daily sale you know overall you know global wide uh, and also since uh, it's uh, you know like a two years long data so you know like uh, we also will enable a built-in slider within this graph to allow you know like you uh, you know you can simply drag and drop and pick up a different period uh, and look at like a much detailed level to see you know more detailed like comparisons and you can also try to like resize the period selection and look at uh, like a longer period if you want. Uh, actually, you know, similar as earlier, uh, like uh, the uh, IoT uh, uh, dashboard, uh, you can also try to apply this uh, overall entire dashboard level uh, filter to, you know, like affect the entire like uh, peer rate like selection in the whole dashboard, and then you know, like uh, give the overall you know coordinated like updates uh, to the uh, you know like uh, customers. And in this uh, dashboard, actually, we also start to offer like a geo maps. Uh, in this map, basically, we use uh, the marker tips to uh, represent uh, the individual like a uh, data by uh, locations. So when you mouse over, you will see like where they are, right? And also, you may already uh, start to see like it's clickable. Actually, when I click that, uh, Jerry Part will also offer you another like a very nice feature we call message. Try to you know like uh, use the action I did in this map component to trigger some other filter uh, actions uh, in other components in the same dashboard. 
And furthermore, actually we can also easily to start to customize uh, this dashboard, as you see here. Right, you know, I want to like put a one more like uh, comparison into this uh, coffee cell dashboard. No problem. Let's try to resize the daily cell a little bit. Uh, you know, leave some space uh, empty for me uh, to look at some other components. And then you can come to like uh, the libraries to look at all the widgets uh, you may be uh, uh, prepared for you know like a uh, customer to use. And then you know all I need to do simply drag and drop, put a new components into the dashboard. Normally resize a little bit, and here we go. You start to create a, a fresh new dashboard to you know also look at it from the countryside. All right. So after the first dashboard, let's uh, get into uh, the second one. And in this case, I would like to highlight our new functionality, uh, geo analysis and heat map. So in this dashboard, you can see you know, like inside to show the uh, data in the map traditionally by different individual pins. Now like we will try to use area to you know like uh, highlight the data right by different locations. Uh, and then you can see here like basically JRepart will offer you the you know like uh, navigation, the drill, drill down, drill up, those kind of uh, actions, not just in the regular chart graph table, pivot table, cross tabs. Uh, we also will offer you in the geo maps, so you can easily try to narrow down from like uh, the state level comparison. Since I click California, now I get into the, uh, the county level individual comparisons within California. And also same thing here, right? You know, down below in that uh, you know like a uh, uh, comparison table to show the employment rate. Uh, we will also you know filter the data just for uh, you know like. Uh, uh, California, right? So you know now we will get into this, uh, uh, you know, like a detailed report to show, uh, you know, like a you know, like a county level comparison, uh, you know, like a, by a heat map. So in this case, uh, not just try to show the, uh, the employment rate, you know, like a, by this like a color code within this, uh, you know, like a uh, heat map. Also, you know, we can introduce another angle to represent data. Like uh, by the size of the individual boxes, we can also show the populations for the labor force, right? And you can do on-screen filter whenever you need, right? You know, I could try to narrow down like uh, the detail selection, and then related like uh, information will be updated. Okay, now let's uh, get into like a more ad hoc like a uh, report approach. Uh, in this case, I will try to you know give a customer uh, more flexibility focus on the individual components in the report itself, and will allow them try to easily to customize them. So first, after I open this report, you know I can still do some basic reporting uh, activity like on screen filtering, right? Really try to give customers some flexibility, slice and dice the data, and I try to apply multiple com uh, conditions and get into some like a result like they want to like uh, look at. And after like uh, they apply the like a product type and individual products, now sounds like uh, the filtered results show you know USA get still get a like, pretty big portion. All right, then maybe the next uh, you know like uh, discovery we may want to see what's going on in US, right? No problem. Let's mouse over the USA, click it. Now we will easily narrow down to the next level, uh, the states, right? So in both a J report dashboard side and uh, like Idaho reporting end, we will give you the similar function, the uh, data dr uh, drill type action, try to allow the end user like from the higher level narrow down to the lower level, layer by layers, to really you know find out like what's going on, you know, like for their you know like uh, data comparisons. And similar thing uh, also is available in uh, this uh, down below pivot table, right? So you can start to like do the multi-dimensional drill as what I did earlier in like the top chart. But also in addition, since it's ad hoc, then obviously we also want to give a little bit more actual flexibility for the end user to be able to easily customize this report. So now let's like simply click the edit mode. Right, enable some additional like uh, functionalities we can offer to the customer. Now, like very important, they can take a look. You know, currently, what else uh, from the data body points? You know, like they can use in this report. 
So when they look at this like a couple of different areas, sounds like the cells here also is another quite interesting condition they can think about. Okay, let's try to drag and drop. Put this uh, cells here into the pivot. Now you can see just after a simple drag and drop action, now in my pivot table, I start to get uh, another detailed breakdown under the product. Okay, we also see the yearly comparison now. All right, so this is just a very quick like ad hoc reporting, uh, you know, presentation. Now, like, uh, uh, let's get into the, uh, you know, like uh, we call visual analysis, I got a quick demo. And for this, basically, we will try to give you another way to take a look at ad hoc. How can you easily try to look at the data, find out what's going on, you know, like behind the scene, right? So, for example, right, you know, like a customer can start over just by, you know, simple drag and drop type action to pick up a certain, you know, criteria into this uh, uh, display you know, area. And then you can see as soon as you start to put a certain like a dimensions into the either column level or row level, you start to create this uh, pivot table structure, right? And as soon as you start to put a measure into like uh, the label display, here we go, we got a fresh uh, pivot table. Now we can try to see, okay, by different regions, by different uh, like a time uh, uh, series, like in this case months, uh, what's like a total cell comparisons, right? And instantly, if you start trying to like break down the data from another angle, let's try to easily put one more like a dimension in this case of uh, categories into the color by, all right, now we get another layer breakdown in the pivot. But you know what? Maybe let's try to like rotate this uh, con uh, in like a display a little bit. Simple one click. Now like uh, the time series go to the top like uh, a column level, and then you know regions get into like uh, the row level. Okay, now I want to see a chart graph instead. Okay, let's try to drag these measures from the label to like uh, either column or row levels. Here we go. We switch over from like a pivot table to the uh, you know like a multi-dimensional chart. Right, and maybe I do not need this by region anymore. Okay, here we go. Like it's a multi-stack chart. Instantly switch over the chart graph from the bar to to line. You will get the trending line instantly. Right by the different uh, you know like uh, uh, months, like uh, you know from like ascending order, and you will see like uh, overall like uh, within uh, two years was uh, you know like uh, the top cell and the bottom cell, right? Uh, maybe, you know, now let's try to apply additional different sort, right? Maybe let's try to sort by the total cell instead, right? Just need to pick up like this condition, apply, and here we go. Now we can easily tell, actually in the March 2012, we get the most sale by, uh, you know, flavored, right? And then let's simply go back to the bar chart instead. Right, so easily give you some like flexibility to uh, you know like uh, uh, simply compare uh, you know like uh, data by a couple of different angles, and then you know you will also get the built-in slice and dice type of function. Use our filter uh, conditions. Try to easily you know like uh, you know like look at the data from more specific like detailed conditions. Okay, this is a quick demo for the J report. Now back to Dean. Okay, thanks, Leo. Let me change presenters back to me, and uh, let me go ahead and show my screen here. Okay, so I just want to follow up uh, the demo and uh, just cover a quick slide about our customer base. We actually service um, all uh, customer, customers across many different verticals, financial services to telecom, a lot of ISVs. I'm not going to go through all these, but um, uh, we worked with a lot of different uh, industries. Uh, just wanted to kind of showcase that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> the next slide I want to show is just a uh, a quick slide with some of our contact information. Um, we're going to be sending all of the attendees and registrants a follow-up email with an exclusive uh, GeoPro 13 trial. We actually just introduced a GeoPro 13.1 beta, uh, so if you're interested in checking that out, please uh, let me know. Uh, we'll love to do a proof of concept with you guys, and uh, we'll be sending you a white paper uh, about uh, streamlining business intelligence as well. Uh, you can visit our website, geofinet.com, and um, uh, check out an online uh, product demo video. Uh, to kind of get more in depth from what uh, Leo showed you today. And uh, then uh, we have Wadio's information here. You can talk, contact Mitchell uh, Goldner anytime in his email. Uh, you can also call them. 
Um, also, uh, BIPIO that uh, Mitchell mentioned before, you can reach them at uh, BIPIO. Dot, uh, bip.io is their web address and you can reach us at uh, jimfinite.com and uh, reach out to me Gene Yao uh, my email address and phone number and follow us on Twitter uh, so with that let me actually uh, uh, ask some of the polling questions or actually a, um, a polling question uh, real quick before I turn to the Q&A we have a few questions coming in from the Q&A so if uh, you could launch the polling question there leave that on for another few seconds all right, now uh, let's go to the Q&A that uh, came in throughout the, the webinar. Um, the first one, and I'll have Leo answer these, uh, the first one is how is connecting to MongoDB any different than connecting to any other database such as a traditional relational database? Uh, Okay, yes, definitely there's some difference like between like uh, how we Jerry Park connect to the MongoDB and other traditional RDBMS. Uh, basically for MongoDB, like uh, we, you know, like uh, build a specific connector using the MongoDB native driver instead of the normal like a JDBC term uh, to connect to MongoDB. And also Jerry part will fetch data from the MongoDB uh, through that aggregation framework. So this is more, you know, efficient way for a Jerry part to consume the data, especially the aggregated result from MongoDB, and also, you know, save a lot of time about a data uh, fetching like a process uh, in order to get like a better, you know, like a response like through, uh, you know, our uh, visualization interface to respond to the customer side. Okay, thanks Leo. We have one more. Uh, we already have hundreds of queries written for JReport. Do we need to write new queries for or mo new queries or modify our queries to enable ad hoc reporting? Uh, actually, you know, like this is uh, quite like a, a nice question. Uh, you know, like uh, one, you know, specific area, you know, like uh, we consider in Jerry Party is like uh, try to help customer to migrate uh, from like uh, basic function to more advanced function as seamless as possible. So, you know, like in this case, actually, if you want to enable ad hoc reporting function in addition, uh, you do not need to do anything about any existing queries you already built in Jerry Port. All we need to do is just like based on those additional, like a, uh, based on those existing queries, you just need to like uh, reformat them into our customer facing metadata layer we call business view and that's all we require to enable the basic uh, data source uh, to the ad hoc reporting for the end user. Okay, uh, one more question for JRPort, then I have a few audio questions. Um, can we customize JRPort to integrate with our existing single sign-on and security systems? Uh, definitely, you know, like the answer is yes. Uh, JRPort actually one of the main strains, like uh, we try to, you know, help on our customer side is like uh, to uh, simplify the uh, integration process. So, you know, like uh, we offer a single sign-on API interfaces. We also offer some like uh, security, uh, you know, like API interfaces as well. So to, you know, really, you know, allow our customer not just to try to, you know, like uh, Pull the uh, you know like an existing application and the Jerry Park side by side. Instead, you know they can use all those different interfaces we offer to fully integrate their existing single sign and security controls into Jerry Park and uh, take over Jerry Park built in security management. All right, great. Um, thanks, Leo. And now we have a couple questions for uh, Mitchell and Jim. Um, first one is: Is there a way to get started with YDO to explore its functionality? Uh, thanks, Dean. Yes, there, there is. Um, if, if you'll go to the Wadio website, um, go to the Get Started tab, and you can go to Ship IoT, and you can start immediately with the uh, Kenoma platform. Um, that's one way to get started. And if you're a business in search of an IoT solution, you can either email me at mitchell at watt.io or email sales at watt.io. Okay, and uh, one more is, uh, does Wadio have a connected device platform? So, as, as I explained, um, Wadio is an operating environment, and while we don't have a hardware solution, we integrate with hardware solutions like um, connected device platforms. So, we're kind of hardware agnostic, and we can enable connection to a whole variety of uh, hardware platforms, uh, get the data into the Wadio operating environment, and uh, integrate with any third-party uh, data services. 
All right, sounds good. Uh, those are all the questions that uh, came in. But uh, folks, we'll be online till the top of the hour for another uh, five to, let's say, ten minutes. And uh, we'll continue to answer questions. You can type your questions into the uh, question box uh, on the bottom right. You, uh, you can mention whether the question is for Jerryport or uh, Wadio. And uh, we'll be online for, like I said, a few more minutes to answer any kind of other questions you guys have. So with that, uh, Mitchell, Jim, uh, thank you for joining and uh, participating in the, the webinar today. Um, and uh, thank thanks you. to all of Wadio for helping us out with the demo and the presentation. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we will have another webinar next month. Uh, so look out uh, for our uh, emails uh, about that. Thanks for attending, everyone. And thank you, Dean. And yeah.